Hi, Carsten, back again. So Hi. what are we going to do in this video? Yeah, in this video, we do a performance test uh, with one virtual machine on one of the created volumes. Um, why do I do that? Or why should you do that? Um, I, I've done a lot of installations and I, I have basically three tests I do at every installation. We mm -hmm. did already our live migration test to hammer the network with a, uh, is a lot of data. And um, now we do a single VM test and then we do a multiple VM test later called VM fleet. But uh, you see often things in this single VM test that you don't see in the multi VM test. Yeah, this is really to see the behavior of the cloud and there is some expectation so i do always the same test but we will come to that so first let's talk about the virtual machine and uh, mm -hmm. because of the time i i assume everybody of you knows how to install a windows <laughs> server in a virtual machine if not there are some great videos about that mm -hmm. and uh, we will do an additional video where we do the same test in a linux machine so that you mm -hmm. can that you can compare linux and windows uh, it should be the same we so do you created, additional, yeah. yeah. So you created a Windows box, Windows Server 22, um, yeah. and um, let's have a look at. Um, yeah, I, I usually I go to the eval download of Windows Server 2022, 20, uh, install right. a standard version with GUI. I love the GUI, you know. <laughs> so it's it's much easier. I'm old, so I need a GUI, and I have to move my mouse. So. I installed it. Uh, I gave the machine four gigabyte of memory mm -hmm. and eight virtual processors. So okay. that's that should be uh, enough. And uh, I enabled. Whoops, this was wrong. We are on the failover cluster manager. We have to go to connect. Mm -hmm. I enabled the enhanced session mode. So mm -hmm. we get a question about the resolution. Right. And we have to log in always because we now use RDP. Mm -hmm. And I have. To and I think you, you you showed it earlier. I mean that gives you some options like copy and paste um, exactly. and the, exactly. and changing the screen size, right? Yeah. Okay, so now you are within the virtual machine. Um, yeah. And um, no name. We have we right. just enabled uh, a network card. It gets mm -hmm. a D DHCP address. I want to download something. I didn't care about the timing. This is only yeah. the virtual machine is only a vehicle. Yeah. We don't AD join it. We just need it to run mm -hmm. our benchmark test. Okay. So, and the benchmark test I use, I know there are a lot of great benchmarking tools out there, uh, and I love disk SPD, so disk mm -hmm. speed, yeah. but um, I go to a very old one called IO meter, and IO mm -hmm. meter is from last century, <laughs> last millennium, it's from <laughs> 1960, uh, 1996, sorry, was created by Intel. Um, and I use this one not not because it's uh, also old like I am. I use it because it has some Visual. unique features. Mm. Yeah. So mm. we go to iometer.org. Yeah? Um, this is the original site, and you see it. It has a really old layout. And people who do internet for a while know that this was a layout in the 90s for download things. And I <laughs> I download the compiled um, x86 mm -hmm. and 64 version there also mm -hmm. is the source code and so on but i download this and it's it goes to sourceforge of course um, and we will get it downloaded and it's a very small download some megabytes so you see here 3.5 megabytes it's a zip file mm -hmm. yeah i uh, I show in folder, I do something I usually do. If I download something from the web, it's marked as uh, uh, unsafe and I unblock it because I have downloaded this zip file thousands of times. Yeah. I do the same test in every installation for over 10 years now. And there mm -hmm. was there was a time where you didn't do storage bases direct. There were storage bases and even uh, virtual machines on ZAN storage or on single host. So now I have this stuff and I extract it to yep. just the C drive. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now we have under C, we have a directory IO meter. Uh, mm -hmm. 
doesn't I don't bother with renaming it and something I just extracted there. And yep. we find two um, two binaries in there. A GUI part, that's the IO meter, and the worker, that's a dynamo. It's so it's a two part um, mm -hmm. two part file. So this VM I created has also a 50 gigabyte C drive. Um, mm -hmm. because if you use benchmark tools, they usually uh, hit uh, a test file or multiple test files. Mm -hmm. And I like to have a test file of 10 gigabyte and we will see how we create that. So you see, it's really Intel open source, <laughs> copyright 2001. Mm -hmm. And you find even a mention of 90 and 96. So I agree mm -hmm. and you see, so you, that we don't get you distracted, I will close everything here. We have just this nice benchmarking tool. Okay. So um, here you see the host name. Yeah, we have yes, dif different tabs here where we have to uh, do something, and you see these nice icons from from a while ago. Yeah. So here we see our our um, host name mm -hmm. we didn't rename it uh, and we have a worker for every core, core. Mm -hmm. so we have six virtual cpus cores so eight. Uh, it creates oh sorry you're right eight cores eight. it creates eight workers mm -hmm. so now we have first we have to tell where should the test be done on which drive so and uh, unfortunately the uh, the uh, the gui is not complete consistent. So I'm mm. on the host. And if I check the C drive here, mm -hmm. the first worker is set to C, but the second not and the third okay. also. So you have to check for every worker where it should, mm. uh, where its test file is. And that's the inconsistency part of this GUI. Mm -hmm. So okay. for every other uh, um, Thing setting. I, I mm. setting yeah I I can choose the the server name or the the computer name and it will mm -hmm. set every worker but only for the drive selection okay. we have to do. so I I told you I want to do a 10 gigabyte file and mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately here is not kilobytes gigabytes megabytes or bytes it's sector so you have to know how how big a sector was in 2001 and to to do it short it's a 512 byte sector, 512 mm -hmm. bytes. So two sectors would be a kilobyte. Mm -hmm. 2048 sectors, I only go with uh, even numbers, we skip the 48 part. So the, the 2000 sectors is roughly a megabyte. Yeah, so it is a megabyte uh, mm -hmm. roughly. And ad adding three more, uh, it's two million is a gigabyte and we want 10 gigabytes. So we add another zero. So 20 okay. million sectors is mm -hmm. a 10 gigabyte file. And imagine mm -hmm. how much data that is. And our operating systems, I downloaded an Ubuntu for our another video. It has 8.4 gigabytes of, of sheer uh, greatness. And even Windows Server has 5 point something gigabytes. So uh, the our installation images are as large as, as this. Mm -hmm. So what do I do then? I start with one outstanding I own. We will talk about that. Uh, and mm -hmm. we will uh, we will uh, tweak that a bit later. But first, I want a baseline. Mm -hmm. And I create a pattern file that is full random. Mm -hmm. So he will tell us how he does create the full random file. He will create 16 megabyte buffer with sheer random data. And then he will point into it and take the another 512 byte and write it to the disk. So that's done. So mm -hmm. I uh, now I know, I tell the system how large the test file would be, how many outstanding IOs, that is full random. And now we have to specify uh, the how what we want to test mm -hmm. and i decided ages ago to to not do a four kilobyte test why not because every storage system is kind of optimized for four kilobytes our nvmes maybe have four kilobyte sectors not 512 four kilobytes refs our 
or NTFS, it's, it's the C drive is uh, is uh, formatted with NTFS. It has four kilobyte blocks. Uh, ReFS part of the cluster shared volume has four kilobyte. So four kilobyte is kind of ideal. So I wanted to do something that is not ideal, and I decided ages ago to go with eight kilobytes. Unfortunately, we don't have. <laughs> a predefined test here with eight kilobytes. So I choose a four kilobyte aligned 50% read, and we can look here. Uh, four kilobyte, 50% read, 50% write, and 100% ran uh, random. So that's a very heavy test, but I don't want that. I want an eight kilobyte. So I do edit copy. And the important part is aligned. If you choose aligned, that's important. So the blocks are aligned to the underlying storage system. If you do this one, it's it's not as fast as the aligned one. So I mm. choose the aligned one. And then I do edit copy and I change this to 8K, get this, uh, get, uh, rid of the, the, the ed edit one here, and then mm -hmm. I increase it to eight kilobyte. And this is important. You have to increase it to eight kilobyte, otherwise it would be a marketing test. It's stated eight <laughs> kilobyte, but we'll put to four kilobyte, right? Yeah. So we're not doing marketing here. So now, where is it? We don't have it here, but we have to go down to the end, and here is our test. And I can add it to every worker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we now every worker has the same test. Mm -hmm. And now I can go to the result display, and this is also weird. I choose. IOMeter, a very old tool, because I want to see immediately what the tool is doing, not doing a test for three minutes and then get a table of uh, results. I want to see while it's running how it's doing. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So uh, here are two things we have to change. The update frequency is like, uh, like glasses, or it's the infinity. So mm -hmm. we would start the test. And if we stop it, we get numbers. I don't want mm -hmm. that. I want mm -hmm. numbers while it's running so I can specify an update interval, for okay. example, every second. Mm -hmm. And then another result since start of test or last update. If I want results every second, new results here, the, 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 what, what is done the last second, I choose last update. If you mm. want, for example, run the test for 30 minutes and you want a very even numbers, um, you go here with start of test. But I want the results of the last update frequency. Mm -hmm. now, okay. uh, now I do something very weird. I save the configuration. I tell you later why I'm doing this. And if you save the configuration in the same directory where the binary is, it's called IO meter. Yeah, then um, then it will it will uh, be loaded at the next start. And now I kill all the workers. <laughs> okay. And let me start this. And <laughs> uh, now it's preparing the drive. So we will look at the C drive. Here you mm -hmm. see we have our file it started to create and yeah it's not showing that's a that's a problem with explorer sometimes so let me it's creating data but it's not showing it but if you go there and go to the properties we see we have already written 2.9 uh, okay. uh, gigabytes and now it's there and now it's updating for a bit yeah weird right so mm -hmm. now it's not updating anymore, but <laughs> it is it is creating the file. You see it here. Yeah. So it takes, let's say, a minute. Uh, mm -hmm. And depending on how large you do your file. So if you for forget the tip, if you to forget to put a number here, so there would be the zero. It starts writing the file and it will stop writing the file if the disk is full. So in my example, it would generate a disk of 35 gigabytes it takes okay. a while yeah <laughs> so uh, specify a number here otherwise it will write it full and there is sometimes an error with the software it will uh, write anyway a larger file let's see so now we hmm. are exactly at 10 10 million kilobytes and we see the results here mm -hmm. so so we we get results every second and these are not bad for the for the benchmark we do but they are also not great if you heard about 100,000 iops in one vm that's not mm -hmm. 100,000 but we we will get there yeah? mm -hmm. 
So now we see 5,000. What are the numbers? These are 5,000 IOs per second. Here we see the data that is moved. So we see that we uh, read and write, 50% read, 50% write. We read and write 40 data, 40 megabytes. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's 20, roughly 20 megabyte read, 20 megabyte write, if the test mm -hmm. is doing right. Then we see the average latency over this 5,200 IOPS, we have an average latency of 0 0.2 milliseconds. That's good. Mm -hmm really mm -hmm. good but not every io is equal so there are some ios that take longer and here is the longest in this period so out of these roughly 5000 iops there's one the, the longest that has 4.6 milliseconds 1.0 mm -hmm. yeah you see the cpu utilization so let let me add something that i like to do powershell let me ah oh, that's wrong let me just uh, get an administrative powershell you you know what i do disk perf minus yes mm -hmm. so you know what that does i assume so if we open the the task manager yep. we can also get the disk counters here yeah mm -hmm. that, you have the same under Windows client. You can do the same with server when you mm -hmm. enable them. And I did that. And you see here also the 0 0.2 milliseconds latency average response time. It's the mm -hmm. same as here, right? Because some people said this is an old tool. It's not accurate. But Windows servers seems the same. And we can also yep. match the numbers in uh, Windows Admin Center. And you could so, even uh, see that the read write you know, distribution is equal yeah. as you specified the load pattern, right? Yeah. Okay. So uh, we go to uh, Windows Admin Center a bit later. So now we we see that uh, five thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can increase the update sequence so that we see the numbers for a bit. Let's say five seconds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is still the IOs per second. So IOPS mm -hmm. is IO operations per second. Now this is all per second. You see it here. But now the update is all every five seconds. Okay. So now let's tweak it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because what we did is one outstanding I.O. with yep. one worker. Mm -hmm. yeah? So uh, what does it mean? So the application is allowed to write one I.O. against the storage system. So one read, and then it has to wait that the read is giving the data back. And then, mm -hmm. then it can do a write. So it writes one block, one sector, and it has to wait unless... unless uh, uh, the storage system is saying, okay, acknowledgement, I, I, I wrote the data for you. So this is very, very how, brave, not brave, very uh, liberate. So it's, it doesn't do a lot of I.O. The storage yep. system can do more I.O., but here is no parallelism. It's only one worker doing one I.O. at a time. So yeah, usually agree, an application is not so polite and waits until you know it, yeah, it, and it you, you know, just fills yeah, you or just some you know. some are some are yeah. <laughs> so let's do ten. I usually mm -hmm. go with ten outstanding mm -hmm. IOs, and the numbers will change after five seconds, and we give it another five seconds, and then it should be we should have consistent numbers. So now we get around twenty thousand IOPS. We mm -hmm. move 165 megabyte of full random data. We have an average latency of 0 0.5 milliseconds. The latency increased because uh, we say the storage system, read, write, read, write, read, write, read, write, read, write. And then the, if the first write or a read comes back, we can do another one. Yeah? So we mm -hmm. fill up the queue. And of course, the average latency per I.O. is getting longer because the queue is filled up and the storage system has to do something. So, mm -hmm. But it's still very nice and we get 20,000. So we can now tweak it more. We can add, uh, play around with the outstanding I.O.s, but then our latency is going up and we don't get much, much more IOPS, maybe 30,000 or so on. And, but mm -hmm. but uh, um, we sacrifice our latency. Yeah. So mm -hmm. now let's do something else. Let's load the configuration. And I've never done that. So here we have our eight workers. Mm -hmm. but we have to go here. It's still the one here. So I add the zero. And now let's do the test with eight workers because we don't want to extend this uh, video too long, right? 
you may want to change not only worker eight with a ten. Yeah, it's compl completely correct. So if you, I only change this. You mm. are. I, I. I would know it now with the number I see because there was something wrong. Mm -hmm. But you should change every worker to ten, right? And mm -hmm. if we do it on the host, the numbers now it's set for every worker. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do this again. And you see here, we have I.O., we don't have I.O., we have I.O., nice. Mm -hmm. So now you see we have 67, 70,000 IOPS. We are moving half a gigabyte of full red, random data per second. And you see here we have 1.1 millisecond of average okay. latency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, of course, 50% read, 50% write. Yeah, uh, and here's something happening. Uh, that is, if you get this, if you get errors when the CPU workload, the CPU load is not too high. There's something wrong with the test file. So you see here we have 35,000 errors. Yeah, mm. uh, it's not good. So, uh, but we don't have much CPU. So if you got into the 70, 80 percent of CPU usage, you usually get errors, but not at 30 percent. And mm. I had the same weird thing at a customer just recently so what you do here you save your test yes mm -hmm. you close the application you kill the test oh. file okay get it you start it again and usually it should be fine otherwise if you get so many errors you maybe have a problem with your um with your uh virtual disk so here now you see if i have it in my directory it will load it again and we don't have a test file so it will prepare the drives again mm -hmm. so what should you expect and what do i do um independent on how many nodes you have um, for example if you have a two node azure stack hci cluster mm -hmm. with some HDDs and some SSDs as caching device, you should see 50,000 8K IOPS, full random, 50-50, so 50% read, 50% mm -hmm. write, unless you have maybe a very small installation. So there are some boxes out there They look like a Synology or QNAP device. Um, they are maybe not so fast. They maybe give you 30,000. But 50,000 mm -hmm. usually with servers, you should see. If you go up all NVMe, a lot of NVMe is a lot of hosts, uh, you see maybe you should see over 100,000 with decent latencies. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Here we didn't have decent latencies. Uh, it was already over 1.4 milliseconds. I mean, with decent, be, uh, roughly around a millisecond. That's my mm. my sweet spot. Yeah. Uh, with an installation I was last week doing with six nodes, all NVMe, we had 180,000. IOPS with really hmm. nice latencies without error. So, um, and you told me you got even an installation with 200 or 220,000, right? Hmm. So yep. um, you, you see how much I owe you one VM can do on this cluster. It's only one VM running, yeah? to be fair. It's not 50 okay. VMs running, but if the um, application, um, does so many so much pressure on the storage system that we have? It can get the I/O. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Usually the application doesn't re, uh, doesn't uh, put so much pressure on the storage system, but the storage system can deliver this I/O. If the application doesn't request it, it's not the fault of the storage system. The storage system has enough performance. So now we see 55. That's also not great. But and here something is maybe not so good with this design but we will remember the numbers yeah mm -hmm. we should see more mm -hmm. we have a three-way mirror i don't know what's wrong we have an 8k so let's see what's here just check it not edit copy stupid edit so we have 8k 100 percent random 50 50 everything is fine um maybe something with my volume uh, but you see, we have 70,000. So it's still um, in the numbers I told you that you should receive. Mm -hmm. So if I do it again, 
we have roughly 50,000. That's disappointing. And <laughs> 1.4 milliseconds. Uh, we will see. See how uh, the Linux test is doing. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have questions, my friend? No, I think it's a, it, it isn't a complex or difficult setup, right? The tool is a little bit, you know, um, love demanding, as I would say, but um, I think it is something uh, really that should be done. Otherwise, you don't know how, which kind of performance your virtual machines will get. Um, I think yeah. it's a good thing to demonstrate if the cluster is sort of in working in expected ranges, um, because I have found issues um, using that tool, right? Where I mm -hmm. saw IOPS going up and then down and then staying there for a couple of seconds at zero, right? Because otherwise you would not see that in production and you don't want to find that out when it's in production, right? So you want to, after the, after the installation, yeah. that's something. Yeah. Well, that, that's so, a nice view. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I would investigate my cluster, to be honest, between our videos, I had to turn uh, to, to uh, turn it down and, uh, create a stretch cluster because I, I did a stretch cluster presentation somewhere and now I set it up last weekend and maybe I missed something. So here is something not okay with this cluster. Mm -hmm. If this cluster should do 120, 130,000 IOPS with uh, better latency. So something mm -hmm. is wrong here. I have to investigate. But this is why we do the test. Mm -hmm. If you like me have done this test at least a thousand times, maybe much, much more, you know which numbers are okay and not for which design. And this is a four node, all yeah. NVMe cluster with very high uh, um, storage bandwidth between the nodes. You saw that in the live migration test, right? This cluster should be should do better. And now it's, now it's time to investigate what's wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is something that we get out of the cluster. But I just were, while you were talking, I just switched to Windows Admin Center to show the volume. And we are in the vol volume collect where the where mm -hmm. this benchmark lives. Yeah, and we see here, uh, and this I love, we see our 27,000 read and write IOPS. So mm -hmm. IO meter is exactly doing on the on the volume what we uh, told him it's it's here very smooth at our 10 uh -huh. seconds and you uh -huh. see here we have a read latency in the volume of 116 uh -huh. microsecond and 160 uh, microsecond that's also very nice yeah we have a uh -huh. little bit more latency in the vm because it's another layer but on the volume we have really nice latencies and here you see the throughput 212 megabyte 212 that's also the 50-50. So mm -hmm. you see here in Windows Admin Center, and this really I love um, about it, you see the numbers. Yeah? We, can mm -hmm. ev we could even dive into the drives, what the drives are doing, but here you see the numbers of the volume and um, even over days, weeks, months, and years. Mm -hmm. Okay, so enough for that. And we will. I will investigate and we will do another test with Linux and maybe show better numbers with IO meter if I find the problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see you next time. See you.